Now let's talk about the transactional pillars in an organization. When it comes to relationships, and in this context, I'm using organization and employee as a relationship. And we transact in our relationships on very different, on many different levels. And so going forward is understanding what are those five pillars that we transact through when it comes to the workplace as an organization, but also as an employee. The first pillar is what we call the functional pillar. The functional pillar is, is when it comes to our roles and our tasks or our function in the workplace. Are we being stimulated? Are we being empowered? Do we feel engaged? Are we provided opportunities to learn? Is the organization providing that for us? And are we also co-creating it for ourselves? That helps us to function at our best. The second pillar is the emotional pillar. And this is where psychological safety and emotional safety comes in, or what is often termed as emotional intelligence. Do I, as an organ, do I as an employee feel connected to my organization and my leaders and my team? Do I feel valued? Do I feel trusted? Do I feel that my wellness and my well-being needs are taken into account? And from an organization perspective, are my employees engaged? Are they connected or are they disengaged? And is the environment dysfunctional? Do we value our employees and how do we show them that? What do we do to show that their contribution is being valued? Because it's not just about the salary that you are paying them every month. Um, how are you showing your employees that you're trusting them? If you have monitoring software on their laptops and their devices, that you're monitoring their behavior and when they are and when they aren't online, that is sending a signal that you don't trust them. If you're not hearing their um, contributions, their views, their opinions, their ideas, their solutions that they're coming up with, you're not engaging with them. And if you're not putting um, adapted, integrated employee wellness and mental health structures in place that shows that you are serious about your employees' wellness and well-being, you are going to have a revolving door with your talent walking out the door and very little new talent being attracted to your organization. The third pillar is the physical pillar. This is around your workspace. So first of all, as an employee at home, if I'm working from home and that is my workspace, do I have the comfort that I need? Basic comforts like stable Wi-Fi and connectivity. We've all experienced this and it can be so frustrating when we're trying to do something or contribute to a meeting, an online meeting, and we lose connectivity or we sound like we're in a fishbowl. Do we have access to the basic things that we need, things like data, a, a printer, a chair that, that meets my ergonomic needs? What is my experience like if I'm working from home? How connected do I feel to my organization without being in that physical workspace? And do I have access to the resources that I need to be able to do my job? So, for example, access to systems, to processes, to information, to data, to people. And it's the same from a corporate or an organization point of view when it comes to that physical workspace. So if you are working, or putting a hybrid working model in place, what does that look like now? Because a lot of companies have given up their official workspaces and have moved to shared workspaces. What does that mean? What is that experience that you're creating? Um, how comforting or comfortable is it? How easy is it to access? Um, I was working with an organization and one of the frustrations, it was the smallest little thing, but it was frustrating employees to no end when they came to work every day. And until we actually sat down and had the conversation and asked what wasn't working, would you believe it or not, but it was actually about parking there was not enough parking in the organization to cater for everybody, for all the employees that were traveling to work. And people were getting so frustrated driving around and around trying to find parking before they even got into the workplace. And this was contributing to that grudge purchase of coming to the workplace. It wasn't a nice experience for employees. Then the financial pillar, and this, this talks to productivity and output. So do I have clarity as an employee on exactly what is expected of me in terms of my role, my task, my functions? Do I know how my performance is being measured? 
do I know what my benefits are and have my benefits been updated or modified to accommodate and adapt to this new hybrid working environment or this online virtual world? For example, in the past, pre-COVID, we may have got things like travel allowances. With people not traveling anymore, maybe we do away with travel allowances and we give them data allowances that they can have data access and work from home. And then recognition and reward programs, have those been updated and are they relevant in an online, virtual or a hybrid working world? Um, you know, because how do we recognize and reward people if they're not in the workspace before? Before it was easy, we would have a, a social gathering, we would have drinks after work, or we would have a, a, a team gathering or a conference or a seminar in the workplace where we got everybody together and we might have handed out awards or had gala dinner evenings, those kind of things. We don't have that anymore. So how are we going to be creative and innovative with, with those spaces and those, those needs? Or are there even needs going forward anymore? But at the end of the day, the most basic human need that we all want is we all want to feel valued and we want to feel appreciated. So how are we feeling valued and appreciated outside of only the money component? And then there's the fifth pillar, which is the spiritual pillar, and that is around values and culture. How are companies now recreating their culture in a hybrid environment? Because one of the biggest concerns in the last 18 months is how do we keep our company culture alive in a remote or a virtual or an online space when we're not together? And we miss those little social interactions that we had with each other that contributed to building the culture. The little chats around the coffee station or the water cooler station or the smoker's corner or cross-functional team pollination because we could chat to people in other departments and other divisions. But a great opportunity right now for a lot of organizations is to review your values, your company values, because your values play a large contributing role in determining your company culture. And just like in the home where parents create the tone and the culture for children to grow up in and thrive in, leadership creates that tone and that environment and that culture for employees to thrive in. So some of your um, values may no longer be relevant or applicable in a hybrid working model or a virtual working model. And maybe you need to go relook at them or scrap your values altogether and come together and create new values that are much more relevant and applicable and are being able to be lived in a virtual hybrid working world. Leadership skills, as I said, we've had to change and update how we are now developing ourselves as leaders and the new skills that we need, but also transparency. Um, yes, the organization does not have all the answers. We don't know from one day to the next where we're going to be. And instead of going from having our usual five, 10 year business plans and, and visions and strategies that we're working on, right now we've had to look at what strategy are we gonna to implement tomorrow or next week or next month because of this ongoing uncertainty and, and the different ways that we are working and, and how we are working. And then most importantly, DEIAB, -E so diversity, equality, inclusivity, and the two new ones that's being spoken about a lot is acceptance and belonging. Implementing your DEI strategy together with your mental health and wellness strategy, together with your hybrid working model strategy is going to be key around how do you create inclusivity and equality and embrace a place or a space where everybody feels like they are accepted and they belonging. So those are the organizational transactional, transactional pillars that we're going to need to incorporate or use as a reference and a benchmark um, to create those strategies going forward. Mm -hmm.